Miniaturization. The world has been obsessed with it for over a decade. People are dying to buy things that are smaller, but simultaneously don't lose on quality. Companies are all about microchips. How convenient they are. Small objects with such good properties. Who would imagine something like this 15 years ago when Apple reinvented the phone and released their fa first iPhone? Its functions were quite limited, considering the appliance was very thick. Now we would expect it much more. The direction of improvement was quite predictable. Fit as much as possible into a single device. Therefore, the battery life has increased, the quality of photos have improved, processors are faster and smaller. To put it shortly, devices are becoming more efficient. Now we've reached the verge of capabilities that can be achieved using present substances. New technologies need new materials. Super materials with unparalleled properties. Who would suspect that we'll find an answer in such an ordinary chemical element? Fourth most common on Earth, carbon. We actually already got acquainted with a well-known carbon allotrope, graphite. We know it's non-inflammable, superconductive with either heat and energy and light. But now we know even more that its single layer, graphene, it's even more promising. For a couple of years since the first successfully conducted studies on graphene, we've been flooded with predictions and information on why graphene is such a milestone in our lives. People, to boost its importance, started to even name it as the consecutive most important material of our times, like stone during Stone Age. Several companies started to propose a vari variety of graphene usages, which would then be a great solution to many problems we've been facing, but what turned out to be the main obstacle is the graphene's production cost. Despite its miraculous properties, graphene is just not a worthy substitute to other, maybe worse, but for sure cheaper substitutes. So why is it so expensive to produce? Technology doesn't always equal people's imagination. Scientists encountered the biggest problem while producing the big layers of graphene, actually the ones that are needed, so small particles of this material can be even found in soot. Now let's move back to 2004, when two Russian scientists, Andrei Gleim and Konstantin Novoselov, first managed to isolate a single layer of atoms. You may wonder, how sophisticated and complex had this proce producing procedure had to be? Well, nothing further from the truth. These two phenomenal scientists got a Nobel Prize for a discovery in which the tools they used were some tape and graphite. Yes, it only takes a piece of tape and graphite, even from your pencil, to produce something that's innovative. To explain it a little bit more precisely, let's look closely into its molecular structure and compare it to pure graphite. These two materials, despite being visually so different, are actually both composed of the same atoms, carbon atoms. The main distinction lays in each material structure, which is the factor that is defining the one's properties. The key is that graphite is three-dimensional. Each of its atoms is connected by a covalent bond with three other corresponding ones. This forms into layers which then are stacked on and held by much weaker, vulnerable physical forces. So, as you may suppose, graphite has to have somehow analogous form to its successor because we can produce graphene just by peeling away its single layers. So, to put it shortly, if we've stacked layers of graphene one on another, we would form a structure almost identical to graphite. Now let's talk about our main character. One atom thick, or better said, thin, with a honeycomb structure made out of carbon atoms, graphene. Each of its layers is approximately 0.3 nanometers thick. If we've stacked three millions of them, they would be only one millimeter thick. Thanks to this, Graphene is transparent. But what makes graphene so unique 
as being only two-dimensional. This is the reason why actually many people didn't even believe in it existing, because everything around us has three dimensions, has its width, length, and height. Isolating something two-dimensional was just out of question. Scientists gave it their best shots to prove all the skeptics wrong. Now we know that they had their points, because we just don't have the needed supplies, knowledge, and infrastructure to actually mass produce something two-dimensional. However, now made sheets of graphene are really close to perfection. There are still some curls up occurring on the structure. So when we look closely into its molecular structure, we can see what I've already mentioned, um, a honeycomb structure. Numerous black dots are carbon atoms which are linked and forms a hexagonal structure which resembles a chicken wire. What's important is that these atoms' motion are very limited because normally atoms can move into many directions, whereas graphene atoms can choose only between two. And this is one of the reasons that makes the material two-dimensional. So thanks to this remarkable structure, graphene has some outstanding properties. Experiments conducted on graphene show that it is 200 times stronger than steel, a great conductor of either electricity or heat, still remaining only one atom thick. So, um, now, as I've already mentioned, uh, so why, we are so, why we are actually so obsessed with graphene are the ameliorations that would be possible if graphene was mass-produced. As I've mentioned, there already are some companies willing to incorporate graphene into their products. Let's discuss one of them, HET, a sports equipment company. They've taken advantage of graphene's strength, flexibility, and weight to implement it into their products. Actually, many ten top tennis players, such as Alexander Zverev or Novak Djokovic, are playing with a tennis racket with graphene in it. Um, Head claims that their 300 plus graphene technology is reducing, is optimizing the energy transfer by reducing the frame deformation, as well as enhancing the touch, better maneuverability, and more power. With still many ideas to come, let's hope that hailed as the most promising material of our lives, graphene is not going to short, fall short of our expectations. Thank you very much. <laughs>